your boy Corey G, Small Arms Danny, the graphic gangster. And we got the professor that we've added to the panel today. We're going to talk about bands. So a lot of you guys on the website in the Max Stepper Mafia train with bands. You've seen us train with bands in the 4AM crew. Crazy. We're always talking about bands. But we're not really the science professionals around here. So we brought the professor in to break down what's actually happening when you train against a band. Why do we like them so much? Why do we feel so much stronger? And like from a nervous system, the strength curve I hear people talk about, overspeed eccentrics, all these things Louis thrown out over the years. When you hear people ask why bands, what is your first answer, Don? Because people literally ask me that all the time. Well, you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned the nervous system because all muscle performance is going to come from the nervous system, whether it's the central nervous system uh, through the peripheral nervous system you have to have more motor units recruited to generate more force. And a motor unit is a motor nerve, alpha motor neuron, and all the muscle fibers Hold on. that it He just said alpha motor neuron, like Cole knew what you were talking about. I'm just, I, I'm just looking <laughs> at Don shaking my head, like, yep. <laughs> he he yep. ripped that off, I looked at Cole, and Cole's like, yep. <laughs> He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I did get an A plus in biology at the high school, so that's a, so that's a thing. But it wasn't exercise or anything like that. So <laughs> good. Sorry, Don. That was just too funny. Oh, you're good. You're good. So, motor units, alpha neuron. Yep. Go. And so we're, we're training that central nervous system to behave a little bit differently when we when we throw bands on a bar, whether it's the bench press or the squat, even the deadlift to a certain extent. One of the things about the bench press and the and the squat is we usually say they have an ascending strength curve. So. Uh, the lift gets a little easier as you get closer to the end of the lift or the top of the lift, which means the last 25% of those lifts, you're not getting as much motor unit recruitment mm. without bands. You throw bands on the bar, now all of a sudden you have to, the, the central nervous system essentially has to keep its foot on the gas the whole way through the rep. And so you have much more nervous system involvement with bands. The other thing is you have to generate more acceleration either off the chest or off the floor or out of the hole of the squat. And in most research studies, it shows that the successful lifters, those who lift the most in these three lifts, generate the most acceleration from the starting point. From out of the hole, so, to speak. so when uh, people talk about its training or within the strength curve, is that really what is that what they're referencing, Don? I've heard people say it that way, but it's like that you're forcing more motor recruitment in this part that's easier. Right. Okay. Love it. That's interesting. Who's, whose phone is that that's beeping? That was me. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. All it's right, the professor. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you talk about kind of like, obviously that's coming out of the hole or off your chest, whatever it is. Why don't you talk about the speed in which you're going down? Like whether you're going down to a squat, like are you trying to go as fast as possible? Are you trying to slow it down somewhere in the middle? That's a great question because with the bands, it creates more, it creates more velocity on the eccentric portion too. So it's like, which obviously can then run into the stretch reflex to reverse. So that's a great question, Danny. Absolutely. The, you didn't even know how good that question was. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have to maintain control and you all know what it's like to unrack, for example, four reds or something like that. And immediately your central nervous system is, is going to react much different than if you didn't have that on the bar. Yeah. And so all of a sudden you have a lot of motor unit recruitment right away. So our rate of force development is probably going to go up as a result of that. I say probably because research is pretty slim. Yeah. These things. But um, as you descend, yeah, you're getting more of a stretch reflex. You're getting more motor units active, uh, more muscle spindles activated, more stretch reflex. And those muscle spindles are the proprioceptors that create the stretch reflex. They sense rate and magnitude of stretch. And so. This motherfucker is so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what's yeah. interesting. So, like when I was at West Side, you know, Tony Ramos would always talk about the stretch reflex and George Halbert. They were always trying to store enough kinetic energy within the tendons yeah. to, and they would load the bar fast because the bar and to access the stretch reflex, it didn't matter how heavy it was. It would return just as fast as it would load. Yeah. And a lot of people don't really understand what that actually means. So maybe you can, is that what you just explained is <laughs> like, that's yeah. so it's yeah. like, but how do you then quote unquote load the kinetic energy into the tissue? Is it by training it? with that type of speed, which is all the speed work that Westside came up with. Is that how the body, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember like if I would load the bar fast, it would, it would almost feel like a slingshot coming out. Mm -hmm. And if I would load the bar slow, I wouldn't get that same. And I watched Halbert be like, bang. And then it would literally fly off his chest, like crazy fast. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what he kept saying. Like, Stretch reflex, stretch reflex. And I don't even think people even know that's a thing. They don't. And there's actually two components to that. If you think of a rubber band, if you pull a rubber band back to shoot it across the room, you pull it back fast and let it go fast. 
if you pull back slowly and let it go slowly, it doesn't go very far. That's a fucking that's great. A that's, a, that's great, Don. <laughs> I distilled it down. Right yeah, there. go ahead. Well, I shot a lot of rubber bands in high school <laughs> in class, but and there's actually two components that lead to that. There's what's called the series elastic component. And this, uh, there's a lot of elasticity in living human tissue, muscle tissue, mm. especially at that muscle tendon junction. And the younger you are, the more of that musculotendinous stiffness you have. It's kind of like uh, training will result in more musculotendinous stiffness at that muscle tendon junction. So it's like you take a small resistance band, replace it with a big one. You get mm. a lot more recoil. Sure. And uh, if, you, if through training, you can take that stiffness or musculotendinous stiffness or elasticity and now create more of a recoil now your stretch reflex is going to be added to that the stretch reflex is the actual contraction that takes place as a result of a rapid stretch the series elastic component is the stored elastic energy that's released after you go from eccentric to concentric that's why i was going to stop you like we keep saying stretch reflex but what does that actually mean like when you say that you know so if you have you ever been to the doctor and they do the mallet test on your patellar tendon so what they're testing is a stretch reflex. They tap the patellar tendon and it creates just enough stretch on the quadriceps muscle fibers that it, some muscle spindles sense that and they contract, create contraction. And so that little knee jerk you get is just a stretch reflex. So now if I take that and I load 300 pounds in your back and you squat down, you get a huge stretch reflex because now you have a lot more muscle spindles activating, telling the muscle we got to contract concentrically pretty quickly. And so that's essentially what a what a stretch reflex. I is. feel like you've tapped into this on your bench. Yeah, I uh, I definitely live and die by the stretch reflex because <laughs> I my biggest like mantra is I can't lift heavy weights slow. That's just naturally how I am. I think this is developed at a young training age of training for football. Everything they're like, we want fast, explosive fucking punches. Yeah. So whenever I got into powerlifting, basically adding the bands on and actually doing speed work and and not. Uh, touch and go with speed work like with a red on the bar but pausing it down there Bang. as soon as i come up you feel like that kinetic energy like fucking being unleashed so that's like big unleashed. And, it, it, and even on like every squat i squat super fast i load the bar super fast on the way down so that way it gives me a pop to where then the thing i have to train the most is finishing that top portion of the rep which I've, is where the band i've never comes seen in. you and yeah. you've never you've never really grinded weights you either make them and they look easy or you don't make them no yeah, yeah and i think <laughs> i think that has partially something to do with um like my nervous system type mm -hmm. like i can't like grind out a 10 second squat it's just not how my body works and also i now really rely on stretch reflex because if i move it faster it's less time on the bar yeah which equals less pain for me yeah honestly Agree. yeah that's true yeah because when uh i've lifted off for cole and it's like before i can even get it out of my hands he's got it in the and then it's like right back yeah like mm -hmm. literally immediate but whenever we was talking to ramos and he was a big fan of speed work and he did all this stuff like raw like he was a good raw bencher like the pause at the bottom, like yeah. not touching, going it, but pausing at the bottom, just like how you wouldn't meet and then going up and doing that. That was, that was close. What's the difference on like the tissue when it's paused versus like, uh, cause you, you take the momentum all the way out. Right. So it's like load the <clears throat> load and then like literally use that kinetic energy. Correct. Yeah. You lose a little bit because you did stop okay. and you lose a little stretch reflex. So it's just raw power. But if through your training, raw power. you've generated a lot of motor unit recruitment, you still have that higher rate of force development than the average yeah. person would and you're able to you know push the weight out and i noticed you you do press pretty quickly so um, yeah what i think is also interesting don is that with our crew in the 4am we've used the bands not for actual dynamic work we've actually used them mostly for uh max effort work mm -hmm. shout out max effort muscle no free shout outs mm -hmm. but the reality is that's not how bands have really been traditionally used, mm. but that's how we've used them here um, and got crazy results from a standpoint of like absolute strength for our max, our max work. It's like, so what's, I guess the difference in even gr rather than going fast from a speed standpoint, but actually grinding through some of the tension, is it really kind of the same? Like, or is it just purely like a motor cr recruitment game? Yeah, I think it's a motor recruitment game at that point in time. Yeah. And I think well, there's different lifting styles. And there's probably different muscle fiber distributions, like someone yeah. with a high type two muscle fiber distribution is probably going to be able to blast through a, a high resistance lift pretty quickly, mm -hmm. or they're going to fail, one of the two. Um, and I also think there's a difference with age. With age, you lose some of that series elastic component. 
uh, you still have your stretch reflex, but you might be grinding more, mm -hmm. um, which again, places us older guys at a little higher risk of injury sure. in a lot of cases. What about when uh, Louis would reference the Golgi tendon? Like he would say that the bands uh, mimic similar to the tendon, but it would override. He used to go on some big rant. I never really understood it all. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the Golgi tendon uh, organ is what it's called. It's another proprioceptor. It sits, most of them rest in that muscle tendon junction, and that's where the highest torque outputs occur. Okay. They're designed, and the human body is a protective mechanism. So if they sense that's what it was. a rate of force that's too high, rather than rupture that tendon, they cause a reflex inhibition and the muscle fibers mm. relax. And so I think what Louis was talking about is the body over learns how to override that protective mechanism and you just push right through it, which is true. I mean, one of the things that happens with heavy weightlifting is you, as the muscle tendon junction gets stronger, you override those Golgi tendon mm. organ responses. He's trying to get the governor to let off the gas. Yeah, he doesn't want any governor. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Well, because what I always thought was, when I'm taking those big squats that are overloaded by 200, 300 pounds of bands, weights that really we probably couldn't actually hit, it's like that nervous system and pressure, it's the it's like you getting used to that to the point where then you do deload and get to that point. It, it literally is just that, like that feeling. Mm -hmm. The feeling is what drives you to think the confidence is there to make the lift. So I know that's not the science, but that's really what we're doing is training the nervous system at an overload, right? And then as we deload the bar or deload the bands, we just feel like part of it is like the mentality of like, wait, this shit feels light compared to what I've been handling. Mm -hmm. Why can't I make this? And I think that the other part I found with some of my younger kids that are using like oranges, like the micros, they're not using crazy heavy stuff, is the form police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause like, think about it. Everybody makes fun of people being on Smith machines cause it, it keeps you in that range, right? But the band still allows you to float a little bit but also does keep you in the range. And so like, I've never seen so many young people have good front squat form, primarily because I started them on bands early, and if they don't keep their elbows up, they're gonna get bent over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so between that, their bar path on their bench, and then and some on their, on their deadlifts, it's literally like teaching them how to lift, mm -hmm. um, maybe even better than I could tell form no, because yeah. it, it just shows them, it gives them feedback immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I think that that's really underutilized with some of our younger kids, honestly. And we're not doing like crazy max effort work on it, but I've seen them like speed up quick on form um, yeah. because of that. Cole noticed that. No, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely like putting the bands on like for a beginner is like, or even an advanced person, it identifies like your weaknesses, like where where your faults are on what you're doing. Because on bench press, if if you come out and your elbows immediately flare, that is a red sign. Mm -hmm. If you if you're if as you're, Don does, <laughs> yeah. If you're like uh, it, it teaches you how to brace because you have to because all the pressure like pulling on you. Yeah. Like that's yeah. a huge thing, and those are things that most a lot of lifters if you've never trained with bands, that's like one of the last things they ever figure out. Which yeah. this the bands teach them immediately that you have to do that. So if you literally don't brace, you're gonna feel your torso just yes. like cave in on the <laughs> yeah know, legit. Literally. So you're yeah. either gonna, it's like the margin of error just goes like like this yeah. when you put yeah. bands on, and, or let alone four bands or whatever it is. And, and like bar, the bar path on bench, that's easily nice. the biggest one because the the bands keep you in that straight line. Like mm -hmm. you have to go through there. Well, and I'm always preaching that to the kids that like don't unrack and be overextended, and then you're just dropping and hoping it goes into the right spot. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But with the bands, it's like. And it's stapled and you're like trying to find that power spot. So then it's like that pattern looks like way different. I've just seen like my junior high specifically and my high school kids really, they move so well. And I mm -hmm. think it's mostly because the bands has taught them how to move well, not necessarily me. It's almost a kinesthetic awareness type thing. They, mm -hmm. they know. I love that word. That sounds really good. I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> we create kinesthetic. Yep. That's exactly, that's exactly awareness. How it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing myself any favors by this podcast. I think I sound a little bit dumber, but no, that's okay. Yeah, it's good right. application though. Yeah. Uh, talk about this then, Don. If we're when we're waving the bands, obviously it's like we're in my mind. I'm increasing the nervous system load each week, and then trying to create um, through like when we deload the bands, almost like not complete super compensation like for a meat prep, but the reality is to get 
that enough rest from that tension to where then the nervous system will like let off and hopefully get adapt and get stronger. I don't know. Maybe you can kind of lead people through like how that process happens with the programming. Yeah. I think the, the waving of the bands is what allows the squat every day for those who want to do that. We've all mm-hmm. give, given that a run and, um, the central nervous system is always trying to figure out exactly what's going on. You might be doing the same lift, and that's the whole uh, concept behind the conjugate, conjugate method yeah. is doing the same lift, but biomechanically it's different. But you're actually not doing the same lift. You're not doing the same lift, yeah. yeah. Ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you could squat Monday, Wednesday, and Friday if you didn't want to do it every day, but if you had bands on the bar on Monday, bands on the bar, front squat on Wednesday, and then no bands on Friday, you've just – even though you're squatting, you got three different squat lifts mm-hmm. that something mm-hmm. nervous system cannot figure out exactly. He can't, it can't overtrain on one area. Mm-hmm. And we talk about doing the same movement pattern too often. Using those bands and waving them kind of prevents a lot of that, which is good. Yeah, when I was talking to Matt Winning, uh, like the second time I had <clears throat> been on his show, and he has having me explain it, and he was, you know, saying a bunch of super smart stuff, but he's like, you're going through and squatting five times to seven times a week. You're in the whole month. You're never doing the same lift. I said, yeah. exactly. Because it could even be the variation of like one week we wore lifters. One week we had one band. We did a pause. We did like, I was like, there's multiple variants within each week and the bands alone and then waving them changes the very, like your body is never doing the same lift. Right. Which is the ultimate conjugate. Yeah, right. Absolutely. The so, whole principle behind it. It's the whole principle. So yeah. not because what happens is after what a certain period of time, which this is interesting because Ed Cohn kind of talked about how his programming uh, was pretty similar. He changed his rep scheme, but he did say in his off season, like non competition stuff, he did tons of stiff legs, but he still rotated between stiff legs off the floor, deficit stiff legs, and I think there might have been one other variation. So he still was having a like the body was still like in like a pattern of some type of conjugate work but then he changed the rep scheme too so it wasn't maybe as complex as like what louis had you know had done or did or what we're we're doing but still like similar so at the end of the day you have to challenge the body differently and kind of keep it confused and when i would say like confuse the muscle people like made fun of me but i'm like that's literally what you're trying to do is Mm -hmm. throw curveballs at it constantly so it can't adapt or it needs to continue to adapt needs to continue to adapt and it doesn't it doesn't uh become fatigued if you do the same movement all the time your central nervous system actually actually begins to fatigue Mm. and um that's when you get the plateaus that you hit and you get in that rut and strength levels go down yeah sweet uh don what's your best uh squat to meet uh 551 551 at 181 at 181 176 actually but and how how old i was 57 at the time fuck yeah that's fucking awesome that's sick so what i the reason why i brought that up is i wanted people to hear that this man has the practical application behind some of the program that we just talked about and he you know shed some light on how i think actually smart it is Mm. it's just that i have an inability to explain it that way but i know that because i felt it personally and i've seen it with how many guys over the years oh, right yeah. um and including the older guys we got right now or you todd and john are, are doing really well yeah within the, some of the protocols which is really cool um any other questions so, Danny? like so that being said if someone's inexperienced whether it's weightlifting or just bands themselves like what is like one to three things that they absolutely need to do going into band training I mean, obviously, they need to have them set up correctly. I think that <laughs> yeah. goes without being said. We've seen a lot of those over yeah, the years. But. I'm a huge fan of fundamental movement skills. So your squat, your lunge, your press, and your pull, and your hip hinge all have to be good. So if you have to practice them unweighted or just use band, just use bands and nothing else, make sure those, those movements are crisp and clean. And if you have to have someone coach you, that's fine. But don't start heavy loading until you have those patterns down. Once they're down, you can start loading. And people, uh, I've heard a lot of people say, don't put bands on until someone's advanced. I don't agree with that. And, and you yeah. know, from working mm-hmm. with the young kids, it puts you and right I, into it. I might have believed that until I saw what I saw. Yeah. Because, of course, I don't really believe anything until I actually, like, try it. And then I was like, there's a huge amount of value here. Oh, yeah. My son, Andon, who weighs maybe 100 pounds, just front squatted 135 for five reps yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's been training with bands, and he knows exactly where to keep his elbows. You know, and it's like, I mean, I would have got broken by that in seventh grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, you see a lot of these coaches <clears throat> teaching squats with, like, broomsticks, and um, that, that's okay, but once the broomstick's been mastered, then you throw a 45-pound bar on their back, it, comes, it becomes a, a circus at that point yeah. in time. So. 
if you have something that that will help guide that that young athlete with some kinesthetic awareness into the proper pattern, that really helps a ton. I really things. need to learn how to say that word, kinesthetic awareness. I sound fucking we'll put smart. it on Google for you. <laughs> kinesthetic. Ken O. Ken. Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One more yeah. time. Go ahead. Kinesthetic. There's, there's no. It's not O. Kinesthetic. Yeah. Aesthetic. Yeah. Well, Don could probably test. I got to like a D in kinesiology. If you just say, like, <laughs> yeah, but he had a shirt off every day. Yeah, that worked. Oh. Yeah. Just say hey. it fast and no, and no one notice. Surprising, huh, Danny? Yeah. He had, what, three girls in your lab group? And, yeah. And you, so three women, I'm pretty every sure. Every day we Don, come in. They were like 40-year-old women. I was 20, and they were always, for some reason, I was trying to get my shirt off. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good for you. Like, who wants to do the dunk tank? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this fucking guy. This, yeah. Try his fucking body fat. <laughs> yep. So good. Uh, Cole, anything else? No, it's good. Don, thanks for that. That was really awesome. Yeah, the professor has spoken. We are out. <laughs> <laughs>